Hi there, welcome back. Hey everybody. Um, we are giving our thoughts on Luke chapter 2. Um, hopefully you're sticking with our challenge um, and reading Luke a chapter a day um, before Christmas. Um, and you're following us on our blog. We've been posting daily um, our initial thoughts. And this is kind of extra, extra thoughts um, as we go through Luke. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into chapter 2. All right, let's do it. What are your thoughts? So I really, um, in Luke chapter 2, I liked how at the very beginning, verses 1 through 7, um, Luke is going through and he's showing the humanity of Jesus by describing his birth, right? And how small and uneventful that birth really was, right? I mean, we make such a big deal at Christmas. There's live nativities all over the place. And it is a big deal, but, it is back, a big deal, then... but back then... It was so like minuscule and small. I mean, it, yes, it's a big deal because it triggers off the life of the Messiah, 33 years of his life. You to think too, like how difficult yeah. it probably was to like, you know, they had to travel right. and there's all these little tidbits For, that you don't necessarily get from right. Luke, but. <laughs> For Mary and Joseph, it was eventful because they had to leave their home and travel to Bethlehem. But in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't. It was just this small event. A right. woman had a baby in a, in, in a manger. So, um, so I, it's very humble beginnings for such a great God. Right. Which I thought was, was really cool. Verse 18 says, And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Um, so I just... They made what they had seen widely known um, what was told them about Jesus. So I think that that was great, right? It's what they were so amazed and so excited. Yeah. And we, like, I look at that as an example for us. Like, we should have that same mindset right. of, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. We need to go and see and go and tell. Um, well, that also goes to show to Luke being the historian that he would have gotten part of this account from those people, maybe from the shepherds themselves. Yeah, and I it's think very possible. it says all that who heard it marveled. Right. So like, I think about that word and I just, I think it's fascinating, yeah. like how they marveled over the Lord, especially right. in that setting or that situation, right? right? It would have been difficult for Mary. And, yeah. Right. Yeah, there's that. But then you also have, again, um, back to Luke being the historian, verse 19, how, how it says Mary treasured up all these things in her heart, right? Luke would have also gotten this account from Mary as well, going to show that he knew and had conversation with her to get this story about the birth of Christ. And it's really, um, really cool to see. Yeah, I also think, too, with the shepherds, it's really cool because they... Um, they did all that, but then they also glorified God yeah. within it. So how important is it for us to do the same thing, right? We talk and when then we, we give glory to God in our whatever, right. whatever's happening in our life or whatever. But they glorified God yep. in all of it. Um, so I thought that was cool. Yep. I also noticed, too, with like verse 21... It shows that Mary and Joseph still followed the customs of the law yeah. within, like, with having Jesus and having Well, Jesus you see that in verse 22, even, that they, they followed the law of Moses according to the purification that process that had to be done. So just, uh, that, that just really goes to show that they knew and understood the law of Moses, and they followed that probably over what the oral traditions would have would have told them to do. Yeah, and I even looking back with um, Zacharias and Elizabeth, yeah. that it shows that um, it was on the eighth day at circumcision, right? Same thing yeah. with um, Mary, like the naming, yeah. right? So Jesus was named on the eighth day, John and was. John was also named on yep. the eighth day, and that's when they're circumcised. So it's just, I thought that was really cool yep. um, that it talked about that. So, um, oh, and the and that she had to complete her days of purification according to the law of Moses. Right. That's 22. Yep. It does that. So we're not under the law anymore. And we don't always understand no. the law. What, what it is. And what they had to do. And so it's just, there's a lot of intricacies that yep. we don't get. And so I thought that was um, eye-opening. Yeah. Oh, and I thought too, it says, I just made a note that um, 
that Jesus says later that he came to fulfill the law, um, but before he fulfills the law, he is participating within it. Yeah, right. He because does. as a baby and like growing up, he still does the feasts and things. Right, right. We see that. Um, I think in a couple yeah, <laughs> verses, when they but, travel, but but yeah, so it's just cool that he does participate within right. the law, and then he fulfills it yep. with his death on the cross. So, just thought that was a cool, Nifty. interesting thought. Mm -hmm. So, with verses twenty nine through thirty two, we see Simeon, mm -hmm. and I thought it was cool that this just shows the Lord answers prayer. Yeah, it does. Cause he, he desired to see the salvation of the Lord. And here he's looking into the eyes of this baby that is. Right. So it just gives us confidence yeah. that, you know, um, the Lord does answer prayers yeah. and he answered Simeon's prayer and he, you know, right. maybe we doesn't answer it the way we want it to be answered. Well, yeah, you got to think, I don't think Simeon thought his prayer would be answered when he's older and almost ready to die and yet and and the answer to his prayer comes in the form of an infant yeah and i also think too like he obviously knew mm -hmm. because he said that his yeah. prayer was answered but also how long had he been praying for that right, right? years and years like we get so um caught up in like oh i've Instant been praying for this <laughs> right we want it now we pray like a week and then we're like well the lord hasn't answered us yeah. but you know you look at all these people in the bible that have waited and yep. prayed and prayed and prayed and it's just you know we are like you said yep. instant gratification we can't it's we're not right. good at like the waiting, waiting. <laughs> the waiting and praying right i mean i'm the first to say i'm very bad at waiting <laughs> yeah she is thanks <laughs> <laughs> um so i thought that was cool um, and then also verse 32, which I can read, says, um, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Okay. So I think this is really cool because this shows just this verse alone shows that, um, th these are two separate things, right? Um, the church doesn't replace Israel yeah. <laughs> was my biggest thought on this because it says, um, the Gentiles, right? A light Jesus to bring revelation to the Gentiles. Right. He reveals himself to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel, you know, it's bringing both right in, it's under one both banner under, right. So I thought, um, yeah, it really that was good to note that they're, it's, they're two separate, you know, but anyway, that Not was under Christ. And it really right. brings to mind, um, Isaiah 49 verse six, which you have the Lord who's talking to his servant, which would be Jesus. In this case, he says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Right. So he's talking to a servant and he's saying you it's too light a thing just to save Judah and Israel. You will be a light to the nations. You will save to the ends of the earth. And that phrase to the ends of the earth, that's everyone. Yeah. I just think it's really cool. You know, it, yeah. it shows the two separate things. And, you know, he's he's working in both. Yeah. Avenues. So I liked that. Oh, and then I had a question um, on verse 34 and 35. So I guess I'll just read yeah. those and then. Okay, so 34 and 35 say, Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Okay, so my question is, I don't, what does it mean for a sign which will be spoken against? Yes, a yep. sword will pierce through your own soul also. Yeah, so let's take this and break this whole section down a little bit because I think that's really the only way we're going to get to that answer. Um, so breaking this down, um, you have in verse uh, da, 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 34, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. So in other words the arrogant, the unrepentant, the people that do not turn to Jesus, they will fall. They will be punished, right? They will fall in judgment. Um, however, those that do repent, that do receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, 
um, they would be blessed. They would be risen, risen right? In right. other words, there's going to be a point of division among the Jews. You're either going to accept Jesus and be saved and blessed, or you're going to reject him and therefore face punishment. So that's the first part. Um, and breaking it down more, um, and for a sign that is opposed, um, that that's that was wording there, or another way to put it is a sign that will be spoken against. Um, you got to think here, you have Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, coming to earth. Um, when you have the sinless one coming to earth, that is spitting in the face of sin. And so what he's, he's rebuking that and rebuking all in holiness. Wait, wait, wait. So, okay, so it says in for a sign which what, will be spoken against. Spoken against, right. So, so saying that the people will speak against this. And you see oh, that in the rejection. Like they speak against Jesus. They just right. Okay. It, it, the, the, the sign is Jesus and people will Jesus. be speaking against right, Jesus. Against okay, that him. makes sense. Yes, because you, you, it, it really brings out the bitterness of the human heart. Right? Because here you have this Messiah that's here that's rejecting sin. And the bitterness of the human heart says, no, I don't want that. I'm going to speak against that. Right? And really what, what Simeon is revealing is he's revealing the hearts of the nation of Israel. He's revealing the fact that Jesus Christ will be rejected Okay, so by that the is the rejection yep. of the nation. So then when you go into 35 where it says, yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul right. also. Right, so that is a message to Mary, right? She's right. So going to be, speaking of that's Jesus. speaking of Jesus, but that's speak, he's speaking directly to Mary and how it's, he's describing her feelings watch seeing her son up on the cross like this is what it's going to feel like for you so it's really like powerful right um, and then the last part there so that thoughts um, from many hearts may be revealed um, again the, the this one here really speaks to our reaction to the gospel and to Jesus Christ right our hearts are revealed when we see that or hear that message of salvation, the message of forgiveness. Do we turn and reject it, or do we come running to him and asking, Lord, please forgive me? It's, that's really what it's, it's breaking down and, and speaking about there. Well, with verse 40, so um, this is talking about now when Jesus is a little older and they go to the Feast of the Passover. Mm -hmm. So verse 40 says... And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. I just thought as a parent, you know, we pray over, we pray scripture in our lives. Yeah. And I thought this would be a cool one to pray over our children. Yeah, that like, the grace of God would be upon them. Right, and that they be filled with wisdom yeah. and grow and become strong in spirit. So I just thought that was cool because that's something specific to Jesus, right? And we want our kids to be... Like him. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as a parent, that's kind of what I thought with that one. Um, and then I also thought too, so it goes into like, he went to the feast of the Passover and then they left and Jesus stayed. Yep. And I think he was 12, right? Yeah, roughly around there. Um, so what I thought was cool was that they had traveled for three days. And I, when I, the three days sparked the, oh, I didn't realize, but it's like that was also, there was three days that he, um, you know, was in the tomb. So I don't know why my brain went oh, there, but I, I thought that was an interesting comparison yeah, to this story. To, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was cool. I mean, nothing really fantastical, but just, you yeah. know, a cool little where my thoughts went. Right. Um, and then I also thought it was cool to see that in verse 51, it says that um, he was obeying his parents. Yeah. Um, he was submissive to them. And then again, back to what we saw in, in the previous chapter, right? His mother treasured up these things in her heart, um, just showing that... Um, Luke would have had to have gotten this account from Mary directly. Yeah, I find Which it really is, cool. I love that phrase that she treasured up the things in her heart because yeah. these are like crazy things. Like yeah, crazy events. Imagining like, <laughs> well, if my kids would have done certain different things yeah. like that or said something, I, 
I probably would be doing the same thing. Like, right. Especially with that, for whatever, what Simeon said to her. Yep. That's like, that would be scary almost. A <laughs> brand yeah. new mom getting all that information. So um, I also, oh yeah. So I think that was all I really had. Um, yeah. And then rounding out the chapter, um, verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Just, I thought that's really cool and powerful and how we, as you say, would pray over these things um, over our children. Um, so I would pray that over my children today too, that they would also increase in wisdom. And over and us, I think, too. And over us, yeah. It's good for us to, you know. Right. Increase in favor right. with God and man. God first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says God first. I know. There's a reason for that. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah. we'll... So that's Luke chapter 2. Um, we hope you, you just keep, uh, keep, keep reading on and uh, check back for our, our continued thoughts yeah, um, we'll and questions. Yeah, we'll see you in chapter 3. Chapter 3. <laughs> Bye. Bye.